Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ben Sigelman. I'm here with, I have two hats. I actually have no hats on right now, but metaphorically speaking, I have two hats. One is an open tracing hat and one is a light step hat. And I'm definitely here with my open tracing hat on. Uh, light step is a company where I work uh, and open tracing is a project that I spend a lot of time on. I'm here because I heard that there was some interest in the Prometheus community about open tracing, and I wanted to explain primarily two things. One is what is open tracing and why should you care just as a developer who cares about monitoring? And the other is um, how does open tracing uh, relate to and potentially cooperate with Prometheus, which is something that I'm actually pretty excited about, uh, and I think there's a lot of opportunity there. I'm hoping that someone in the audience will be so bowled over by the possibilities here that they'll want to work with me on some sort of uh, more formal integration and so on. So uh, that said, I've aimed to do this talk in less time than is allotted with the hope that people will interrupt me with questions and perhaps um, you know, corrections when I misspeak about Prometheus. Um, I'll start with a personal anecdote. I was at Google for way too long. Definitely would not recommend working there for nine years. Um, it's big, you know, I, having left Google, which is a wonderful place to work, don't get me wrong, I'm, I enjoy being in the sort of startup ecosystem so much more. But uh, Prometheus is a funny project because it uh, references Borgman in various places in its documentation. And I've actually used Prometheus, I think it's a lot better than Borgman, to be honest, but Borgman was such a nightmare to work with. It was like this monstrosity of five different domain-specific languages that you needed to learn, all of which had these like insane syntax conventions. And the nice thing at Prometheus, they've taken the, the core concepts from Borgman, which I think were quite sensible and well-conceived and forward-looking, and dispensed with this just unbelievable amount of nonsense and inconvenience and cruft. And I spent my last four years with like a team of 20 people at Google basically trying to replace Borgman. So um, it's fun to use Prometheus and see people reimagine that idea uh, in a way that really makes sense. Anyway, so why care about tracing? That's the first question I want to address. I think it's well known at this point that microservices are a thing. I'm not going to lecture everyone about why they're important. It'd be totally redundant at this point. And they're great. I, we use them at my company. Most of the companies I work with via my company also use them, and everyone's pretty happy with the, the basic idea of them, especially from an operational standpoint, or from a development standpoint, and to a certain extent from a deployment standpoint. However, m monitoring, and this maybe speaks to some of Stephen's points, which I enjoyed your presentation, thank you, Stephen, is meant to tell us stories about systems. That's the point of monitoring. If monitoring doesn't tell clear stories about your system, it's totally useless. And the problem of microservices and monitoring, at least in my mind, and I'm like the most, possibly the most biased person in the world about this, so you should disregard my opinion. But since I'm here, my opinion is that um, monitoring stories are completely incoherent at the macro level today with microservices with microservices, in that you have these tools, mainly logging and time series monitoring, that were specifically designed at a time when single processes were actually interesting and told a story of their own. And at this point, with the, you know, especially when you take things to limit with functions as a service and Lambda and so on and so forth, these individual processes are, um, they're not useless to monitor. I mean, uh, we monitor our processes, everyone should, but you can't tell a coherent macro story about your application by monitoring individual processes. In as much as you had a monolith that had shared library boundaries inside of it, those libraries became microservices. And in as much as a transaction used to flow through your process in some sort of fashion, I mean, of course, it was unfortunately, it, it was not and is not a line. It was more of this branching, you know, forks and joins kind of thing. That line now is dotting across a variety of subsystems within your own architecture. And if your monitoring systems tell stories about these little, you know, quadrilaterals and polygons, but they don't tell stories about the entire big picture, it's almost impossible to actually answer some, like, really, really, really basic questions about your system, like what happened, primarily, actually, what happened. And I have not met someone 
who is deployed to microservices and doesn't have some sort of tracing story that is actually able to answer that very basic question, like literally what happened with this request. It's extremely difficult problem to solve if you don't have tracing. And so tracing is really, honestly, it's just kind of logging reimagined for um, distributed systems where you follow controls as you cross process boundaries. So that's all tracing is. And okay, wonderful. So it sounds great, right? Like this is a good pitch. Um, my uh, colleagues and I at Google built Dapper, which is a distributed tracing system. It was useful for sure. Um, so why hasn't it really taken root? Of course, I think people are aware of Zipkin and they're aware of things, you know, maybe you're aware of open tracing, but why, like what's the problem? So the problem is that instrumentation is too hard. That is the problem. I'm, this is something that I feel like I'm on more solid ground. Maybe you don't have to agree with me that tracing is really important, but if you do agree it's important, this is the problem. Straight up. Um, the, the reason why instrumentation has been difficult is that um, uh, there are vendors who make money and they typically want to lock you into their metrics or instrumentation library because that's good for them, right? So, of course, any sensible person, especially any sensible person uh, who's maintaining a third-party open source project doesn't want to lock in all of their users to a vendor, so that's been a problem. Uh, monkey patching is an approach people often take for tracing, and I think it will work at master, but maintaining that code is extremely difficult, um, even in the languages where it's possible. Of course, in Go or something, that is sort of a non-starter, but in Python or JavaScript or Ruby, you can get like a certain distance with monkey patching, but my friends who have done this um, in this community generally are unable to maintain these patches over time, and it's kind of perilous, uh, and doesn't work in some languages. Another issue is that even when you are doing distributed tracing with an open source instrumentation library, the concepts and the nomenclature vary from platform to platform. And in as much as the systems we're trying to instrument are you know, distributed in these different boxes or different languages, it's pretty important that across, uh, across platforms you're able to use the same nouns and verbs and the same terminology and the same semantics. And finally, you need to have some mechanism for handoff between projects that are uh, next to each other in a stack. The reason why tracing instrumentation is so important to standardize, I think, is that it actually doesn't mean it's not useful unless it's standard across your entire system. Like, it's not sufficient to standardize at a library or even within a process. You have to standardize across your entire stack, right? So, this is the problem that uh, a lot of people faced. I was at a meeting that uh, Adrian Cole, who's a wonderful engineer and a friend of mine who's the Zipkin lead maintainer, he organizes this pretty small, like 15 person workshop periodically, where people who are tracing practitioners from different companies get together and basically have a support group. I mean, that's what it boils down to. And the, um, the theme was that it was difficult to get instrumentation deployed across these various organizations, which are, you know, top flight engineering orgs in our industry. It's not like they're dummies or something. And so we actually, during that workshop, were like, maybe we should try and standardize the instrumentation layer. That was about a year ago that we had that conversation. And then in January or February, we like, actually named the project Open Tracing. Um, in a nutshell, Open Tracing was designed to, to, again, address a standardization problem that affects instrumentation specifically. So Open Tracing does not address like, wire formats or um, interoperability uh, of tracing data. It's, it's a design to provide standardization around the instrumentation itself, which is actually the pain point in terms of deployment. The people who care about this are developers who are building microservices at various companies, probably where many of you work or something. Um, open source frameworks who want to play nice with tracing, but don't, again, want to lock into a vendor or do something really hacky uh, or reinvent the wheel. And then, of course, people who are providing monitoring systems, and that's kind of what I'm getting to later in the talk around Prometheus and open tracing, and, and, uh, and there are, I don't even remember, I think there's like seven or eight vendors now that are su supporting open tracing officially, and there's a few more that are recognizable names that I think will be announcing something in the next three to six months. Um, to give you a sense of the architecture, there's the, I honestly hate these diagrams. I don't know why I made one, but oh well. Hopefully this will glean, you'll glean some sort of information from these. I have so much trouble parsing these things. Okay, so maybe after this you can have a show of hands. Did anyone glean anything from this slide? And, and we'll see. So there's an API. It's in the middle of the diagram. There are a bunch of things on the left of the API, and there's a bunch of things on the right of the API. Okay? So on the left, 
are things like application code, microservice frameworks like GoKit or something like that, control flow packages. This is important because actually this is a nice moment for an anecdote. People, with, when they approach distributed tracing, often focus on RPC, which is definitely important. And they think, oh, that's the hard part. It's actually not the hard part. It's, one of the, it's the second hardest part. The hardest part is getting control flow within a process to propagate tracing information because it's often done in a totally ad hoc way. Like if you're handing off control from one thread to another in a highly concurrent system, the tracing system needs to know about that in some way. Um, this is an area where, to be completely frank with you, I think open tracing needs more work and there's our main goal for 2017 is to standardize the way that people do this and make it somewhat pluggable and extensible. But um, in as much as there are control flow packages like futures libraries, promises libraries, that sort of thing, open tracing is a really natural place to add a lot of value with that instrumentation. Um, I, RPC frameworks are, you know, I already mentioned them. And then uh, if you already have instrumentation for some other monitoring system, you can often shoehorn it into open tracing and that can, can be useful too. And then on the other side, there's a number of vendors that support this and, and as I said, that list is growing. Um, but it's, uh, it's a nice way uh, to instrument your code in that you only have to make a change to your main line and in some languages you can actually do it just through a declarative configuration change to configure where the data is actually collected. So, uh, this is particularly relevant to today. This, oh wait, I didn't do my poll. Did uh, anyone glean any information from this slide? Wow, this is like a smashing success. Okay, I'll do it again. Yeah, it was a big main method. Uh, <clears throat> so this is this uh, stupid fable. I have a, a toddler, so I'm like up on kid stories. I don't know if people still remember this, but there's this story of the blind man and the elephant, and you know, one of them's touching the ear and thinks an elephant must be some big floppy, you know, whatever, and someone's touching the, the leg and thinks the elephant's a tree. Blah, 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 blah. So the idea here is that open tracing API can be viewed in many different ways. I actually originally called the API the distributed context propagation API, which is more true to its name. In fact, you can do a lot of other things with open tracing than just tracing. This is very much related to um, what's coming up later in the talk around Prometheus. It's a pretty young project. Um, I think it's actually 11 months old now, but I don't want to get a new baby picture, so 10 months old. And uh, it's already been implemented in a lot of places and it's received a lot of adoption within companies. I think the value prop for people who you know, don't want to lock themselves in is quite high and there's not a lot to lose. So it's, it's going quite well so far. And um, that's it for the boring part of my, of my talk. Let's see how I'm doing on time. I left my phone somewhere else. Luckily, I'll see my, my time in a second. Oh, good, I've got oodles of time, maybe too much time. Well, now is the time in our demo, uh, in, in our presentation where we're going to do demos. So um, let me go back to my presentation. All right, so I want you to imagine a world with faster access to donuts, okay? So this is my pitch. I'm pitching you my startup called DonutSalon.com. It's, um, where do they come from? Sorry, I'm, I'm really nervous about my pitch, so I'm not doing my slides in my order. Donutsalon.com is a donuts as a service. It's a DAS, which I think is it's like the new thing. It's awesome. We're blitz scaling. Is, by the way, I, this is being recorded, I think. That's probably, I shouldn't say this, but I really, really dislike that term a lot. Like, first of all, I think it's just buzzy and that's sort of intrinsically kind of silly, but it is a reference to the Nazis in Germany, blitzkrieging across Europe. That is specifically what it's referring to. And I mean, couldn't there be some other metaphor that we could choose as an industry other than the Nazi war machine for what we should be doing with our startups? It just seems unbelievable to me that that is the metaphor that we chose. Are you with me? We don't like not, yeah. Open tracing does not like Nazis, everyone, so anyway. But we're blitz scaling. Donut Salon is microservice oriented from day one. And we're having some concurrency driven latency problems, spoiler alert. And uh, thankfully, it's built with open tracing. So I can maybe have a prayer at figuring out what's happening. So let's investigate. So uh, I would like everyone here, if you want to participate in this, to load donutsalon.com on your mobile device. You don't have to, but, and then quote unquote order some donuts. And you can take part in a success disaster with me. I'll, I'll do this for
for uh, uh, for everyone to. It's a it's a responsive design. Don't worry. Um, but so I'm going to order a cinnamon donut, and oh, it's already getting slow, which means that you guys are doing. Oh, um, so you can ask for donuts, and um, yeah, like they'll you'll get them eventually. So pretty awesome, right? Uh, I can't promise that they'll arrive in real life, but we can dream. So this is donutsalon.com. Oh, I should also point out this at the top, you're, um, you have a client ID at the top of your screen. Uh, that is uh, just a random number. And Open Tracing has this um, feature where you can take user data and actually inject it into the trace, and it will propagate in band automatically across the entire distributed system which is actually very profound. You can do some pretty amazing things with this. And in this case, I'm injecting the flavor of donut and the ID of your client into that, um, into that uh, baggage mechanism that Open Tracing has. So let's talk about the architecture. So it's a move fast and bake things architecture. <laughs> it's, sorry, it's, it's so bad. Uh, we've got a web client which is, of course, what you have on your phone, talking to a microservice up here, which in turn talks to um, three microservices in serial. There's a, a, to make a donut, you have to mix the batter, fry the batter, and top it. So these are done in serial. Unfortunately, in order to like, you know, move fast, I bought a single-threaded fryer, and so we can only fry one donut at a time. So they're being serialized, and that might be related to our uh, problems. Um, that serialization, of course, is enforced by a mutex. And although it's in Go, I know it should be a channel or whatever, sue me. But, but this is um, a mutex that is open tracing aware. And what I mean by this, and this is actually where the demo is non-silly and is actually a serious conversation, is this mutex wrapper basically just wraps the mutex lock and unlock calls. And what it does is it determines, um, it, it determines uh, if the mutex took a long time to acquire, um, then it will use the open tracing baggage to tell you what was in front of you in the queue. So it, this is kind of powerful, right? So this allows you to see if there's concurrency problems and you're having, and I don't know if you all agree with me, but if you're dealing with latency, it's almost always because there's something in your system that's become a bottleneck. So by doing it this way, we can actually see like literally what's in front of you in the queue and use open tracing to determine where it came from. Um, so uh, with a change that's local to a mutex wrapper and doesn't depend on anything about donuts, I'm able to actually achieve a lot of understanding about, um, about this application and, and what's causing concurrency. So let's look at some traces. So you, you all have hopefully stopped asking for donuts. It's okay if you didn't. Um, I also want to demonstrate how this can be done with multiple tracing systems. So um, I'll, this is the only time I'll talk about my product at all. But uh, yeah, so here's um, the last uh, couple of minutes. We've had this spike in latency for this particular Donuts as a Service app. Um, this uh, particular product allows you to drill down into particular instances of traces at different latency levels. So you know, in as much as we had some sort of spike, I can actually drill down into this particular trace and understand what happened. And so I'll make this bigger so it's more legible. So again, you have the trace starting in the browser. Uh, it's calling the um, web server, which then mixes the batter, fries the donuts, and sprinkles the toppings. Um, it, because there's a lock in here, if we look in this, it'll say that the reason this took a while is that we're waiting for the lock behind six transactions. And I can actually expand that out, and it tells me um, specifically which donuts we are waiting behind, including the client ID. So someone here has client 8448, and that, uh, that person is sitting in front of this particular transaction in the queue. Now, being able to do this sort of analysis is, I think, like almost impossible with other tools. Like, I don't know how you can do this without tracing, and you definitely can't do it this quickly. And so this is the, the virtue of having distributed tracing in your system, is that you can quickly understand, you know, Okay, this is, first of all, what was happening. That's pretty easy, this time series monitoring. Um, things got slow. But you can look at the critical path of a trace, see, okay, this is where things were slow. I guess the network was kind of slow, too, with someone's phone here. <laughs> um, but uh, the frying stage was blocked behind transactions. Like, being able to get through that flow quite quickly is important and 
not easy uh, with conventional tools. So to show the open tracing value prop, I mean, I that was with one backend with literally only a change to the configuration. I can also look at these traces in Zipkin uh, and you know whatever, and I'll click on one of these, and it's sort of the same story. You can look and and see the um, uh, the transaction logs and so on and so forth. So this is awesome, right? So it's like you did one instrumentation run and you're able to see the stuff in whatever tracing system you want to. And in my mind anyway, that's that's like a pretty powerful thing and a novel thing. So that's the gist of an open tracing value prop uh, in a nutshell. I mean, obviously when you do this in real systems, it's not five components in your trace, but it's thousands. And the critical path is much more elaborate and complex. But these basic principles still apply, and, and it's, it just the value just increases multiplicatively with the number of components in your system. So yeah, you saw some vendor neutrality, which is the whole point, it's a standard. You saw that microservice interactions are clear and self-describing. You see a single chart that just shows you the timing diagram for your trace. It seems rather obvious when you see it, but if you don't have um, a tracing system, that's very non-obvious. Uh, and the baggage feature of open tracing can be quite powerful in explaining why things are going wrong and not just like, that they're going wrong, which is typically where monitoring tools land you right now and then you start kind of reading the tea leaves or even reading the code, which is of course like the last, the option of last resort if you're debugging an emergency. And uh, open tracing does scale out well in the real world. There are customers, um, I should say users of open tracing that are generating millions of spans per second in their production system with open tracing with no ill effects. So it definitely scales out. But wait, there's more. I actually was looking for images on Google, but wait, there's more. And I blocked this guy out of my subconscious from high school and like watching infomercials, but it really made me shiver. Um, but there is more to this demo. So we can get pretty interesting results with Prometheus using the open tracing instrumentation as well. So let's talk about uh, getting open tracing data into Prometheus. So I didn't want to bore you all with the detailed rundown of the data model in open tracing, but suffice it to say that those little horizontal bars and those traces, those are called spans, and that's the atom of, not, maybe that's the wrong word, but that's the, the core concept in the open tracing API in terms of instrumentation. And every span has a start time and an end time, which implies a duration. It also has a set of key value tags, also has this baggage. There's also, you know, there's more than this too, but I'm not going to get into it in this demo. So the question is, what would happen if we built uh, an open tracing T adapter that would allow you to keep your tracing system and also have the data diverted to Prometheus or whatever? Uh, so, oh, right, so I should show that. So I am not someone who claims to be a Prometheus expert, but um, I did craft some, uh, some diagrams. This, I believe, is um, uh, <laughs> this is supposed to be a graph of just the raw number of um, queries that were made, and um, this is over the last half an hour. I think if I go back a little further, yeah, okay, right, yeah. So this is this little spike here is when you all had your phones out doing stuff. Thank you very much, very cooperative uh, audience. <laughs> um, and I can also track 95th percentile latency. You can see, you know, we reached some sort of threshold here, and then it, it got better. Um, and uh, and yeah, okay, great. So. You've seen this kind of thing before. Of course, what's cool about this is that there are no code changes beyond open tracing instrumentation. Like all I did was say, I want to at, at main, I want to send this open tracing data to Prometheus as well as to whatever else I was going to send it to. And to my mind, that's actually kind of cool. I can also, and then this is where I think things get more interesting. I can take the baggage feature from open tracing, which again is a non-local tag that's applied to the distributed trace. I made a flavor tag. And I can actually break this down by flavor. Um, it looks like there were a lot of, actually I think this is probably a bug, but we'll let that slide. Um, there were a lot of uh, requests for cinnamon donuts, which is pretty cool. And that tag was actually, again, I, at the risk of reiterating myself too many times, was set in the JavaScript and then was propagated through the distributed system. And this monitoring is, is from one of those microservices that you saw. And that's really cool, right? So it's like you have this, this um, breakdown of the count of requests um, without really doing anything in your code beyond what you already have for like what I imagine should be kind of core instrumentation. And of course, you can also do similar things with 90th percentile latency. Um, I don't know why this is so slow. Okay, so yeah, here we are breaking this down by 
Uh, it turns out that the fryer is agnostic about the flavor of donuts, so uh, you can see that this fry donut uh, histogram doesn't um, care about uh, what flavor of donut you were using. Um, yeah, so does this make sense to people, literally? Okay, uh, so that's, uh, in my mind, uh, potentially a very powerful thing, in as much as it's my belief, which I could be wrong, that tracing is going to be an uh, essential part of microservices in five years, and in as much as something like open tracing is a part of that story, this is like a pretty valuable and easily leveraged source of data. And of course, you can get latency information, which is what I'm demonstrating, but you can also get other sorts of data from open tracing that I'm not going into here, but, but I can talk afterwards if you want about what that would be. Getting back to my presentation, uh, there are a lot of fun things to do in open tracing right now. It's, uh, being that it's early, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit. Uh, it would actually be really awesome. I, I mean, this multiplexer that I wrote, I mean, I literally started working on this yesterday at 11 p.m., and it was not hard to get something working, so rest assured it wouldn't be hard to take it the rest of the way. I was working in Go, but this concept would apply to any language, so if you want to do that, that would be awesome. If, especially the, this audience, if you like Prometheus and you think this is fun, building that bridge to Prometheus does have some subtlety to it, and that Prometheus, and this is some, please do correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think if you're going to do things like histograms, you need to know what your labels are going to be in advance, uh, which introduces some just declarative configuration questions of what's the right API for this and so on and so forth. So it's kind of fun, like there's some things to figure out. Um, but the, it's not a lot of code, and, and it's pretty high value. Um, since we're at Docker, uh, Steve and I have talked about like having some open tracing integration in SwarmKit maybe someday or something. Like if anyone wants to work on that, like that would be awesome for me. I don't know if Docker would accept a pull request, but it'd be fun to see. Um, there's uh, your favorite system in open tracing probably is an instrument already, and I would be happy to shepherd anyone through that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, the, this next one I think is particularly interesting if you have a pre-existing um, fascination with tracing and that we have a bunch of semantic issues to work through, especially around intra-process propagation, which is that thing I referred to earlier. And those discussions are literally happening now. I think it's pretty intellectually interesting and has a lot of impact on the project, so welcome contributions there. And then finally, like if there's a client library for something that's a black box, it would be great to have instrumentation of that too, and we would welcome any sort of contribution there. Um, yeah, so operators are standing by um, on Gitter, and we have, of course, the requisite stuff that you'd expect any open source project to have. We actually don't really use an email list. We do have one, but it's like zero traffic. It was a lot more on Gitter than on email. I don't know what that says about the world, but it's a fact. Um, yeah, so I think that I finished way too early, but that was sort of my established goal. And I wanted to just have a discussion or answer questions. And if I finish early, I'm sure that wouldn't be like a tragedy to anyone either. Uh, so, yeah, fire away. Thanks I guess they're the, mics. The Sorry. Microphone. I really like that mic. Yeah, I could throw it actually. I'm a bad. So, have you tried to integrate this with something like a Kafka pipeline? That's so funny that you asked that. It, we, we were talking with some people who work at the, at the company that, you know, is built around that. I think it would make a lot of sense to do, and I haven't tried it, but that's just my personal experience. But it would make a lot of sense and have a lot of value, I think. You're doing, think of it like an entire Smack stack. Yeah. There's, that's a, that would be a challenge more than RPC right now. Yeah, for sure. And, and I Spark mean, would be even harder. Yeah, it would. I mean, in general, people have been most enthusiastic about adding tracing to highly latency sensitive systems. And, uh, and so that's generally meant that people are doing things that are um, more RPC based and less actor based. But that, I think, is that's changed. Even that fact is changing. And, and I think there are also people who are trying to just understand transactional behavior in systems like ACA. And, and I think it would be quite valuable. Well, I'll also think from the point of view of it, RPC is kind of a linear flow, and these other systems are actually parallel where they come back to together at a certain point. Yeah, and yeah. Will it architecturally work? Yes, it does in open tracing. Uh, the question about implementations is a good one, or the, the, the implied following questions, if open tracing supports it, which implementations support it? Like Zipkin, for instance, has uh, a notion of a single transaction identifier called a trace ID, which is determined early. If you have uh, true, uh, 
a true multi-parent DAG without a single origin, that model is fundamentally unusable, I guess. So it depends on the tracing system. Uh, but open tracing has multiple notions. It supports multiple parentage for causal relationships and also has different semantic descriptors for those relationships. So you can, you can differentiate between something that follows from another event in a queue or something like that and something that is a nested child in an RPC system, for instance. And we're planning on adding additional uh, specifiers as, as needs warrant. But uh, open tracing is not, has, has no issue with that. I think there would be some questions about tracing systems. And there, like every week, there's someone who goes in open tracing and is asking us to add a trace ID function to span. And I like just objectively refuse for this exact reason. The second we do that, what you're asking for isn't going to work anymore. So, and I think that's sort of the vision is that you can describe anything uh, that that's you know um, a DAG, I think. Yes. I just wanted to see a picture. <laughs> All right. Well, wah, wah, wah. no one wants to ask me questions. I, I will ask people here a question. I don't know if there's anyone here who's like really like neck deep in Prometheus stuff, but um, I'm curious if there is someone who wants to just volunteer to speak up. I'm curious since I'm frankly a Prometheus. So, oh, someone's raising their hand. Good, you're on. Uh, I'm curious to hear from someone who really knows Prometheus backwards and forwards about whether similar things to this have been attempted before and what the short, where the pitfalls are. And I'm, I'm interested to hear the answer to that myself. Oh, and sorry, I had an unrelated oh, you didn't, question. Oh, you just got the mic. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, okay. um, just a quick question about if you're using managed services in Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services, um, how, how would open tracing uh, work with those? That's a great question. The answer is somewhat complicated. I think that the right thing to do, quote unquote, would be for the maintainers of the official client libraries for those systems to embrace some sort of either open tracing or at least embrace, like gRPC, for instance, has a, a nice interceptor interface in, in Go and a few other languages, in Java, for instance, which makes it pretty easy to plug stuff like this in without them even having to place a bet. Uh, some of these clients do, some of them do not. Uh, Amazon recently announced X-Ray, which is their own distributed tracing system. I was um, not terribly surprised, but somewhat disappointed that they didn't use open tracing out of the gate. I think it might have partly been a timing issue because the timestamps on some of their files like almost predate open tracing, so they probably made that decision earlier. And I'm actually speaking with the PM of that project and about a month to, um, I think he went on a much needed vacation after their big announcement, but, but when he gets back from vacation, we're supposed to talk, and I, I, I don't have any idea what will happen, but I would like them to add some sort of either explicit support or at least interceptor support to make this sort of thing easy. You can, of course, wrap the entire client, but I find that very heavy-handed and, and, um, and sort of difficult to maintain. Thank you. Um. One thing that I've observed working at companies is that when people talk about monitoring, right, a lot of companies, especially younger companies, seem to think that just kind of like getting one monitoring tool is more than enough, right? Where the difference between a distributed tracing system versus a metrics gathering system versus something like Splunk, which works on logs, sort of the distinction is fairly blurred, right? And a lot of companies I worked at it kind of becomes hard to even propose and to kind of like fight for these sort of tools, just kind of like very specific tools when manager could easily say, well, you know, we have Splunk, it's kind of enough. So if there's, so what I'm, get, what I'm asking is what would be a really good argument in favor of open tracing to, to put forward to a person who's already using some sort of monitoring tool and either doesn't care enough about the differences or you know, it just feels that having like one tool that has something is like enough. Yeah. Um, by the way, this is a good reminder that Cindy organizes this meetup and we should thank her for doing it. Because I, uh, I can attest to the fact that it seems like a lot of work and I was just like not actually doing any of the work. So uh, thank you. 
Anyway, regarding your actual question, I think that uh, open tracing actually has a pretty good pitch there. I think it would be tougher in some ways to advocate for a specific tool, but open tracing is not a tool. You don't run it. So it's more a matter of whether or not uh, the, I mean, I think the argument to people who are organizing budgets and so on would be that they would become less coupled to those decisions over time. And so the vendor neutrality is appealing. And we have definitely seen companies that actually have used literally no vendors. They've just used open tracing internally and built a backend for it internally too and just see it as a hedge, which I think is actually really smart because their source code and instrumentation is notoriously hard to, it, it's kind of rots and usually it's poorly commented and I'm sure that would be no different for this type of instrumentation. So it's nice if at least it's not <laughs> coupling you to a particular um, approach or vendor. Uh, the, your question is also really interesting with regards to Steven's talk in that I think uh, log aggregation a la Splunk or uh, Elasticsearch or Sumo Logic or what have you, those sorts of systems have um, had some difficulty, I think, in a microservices world where there's a certain table stakes that come along with any service that need to go into a monitoring system. And as you multiply out the number of services, those table stakes is multiplied linearly. And so the cost of these centralized aggregation systems that Stephen referred to gets pretty enormous. Like, and so you can end up finding that a tool really is the right thing for your old architecture and no longer is the right thing. And I think if, uh, in as much as people are literally feeling that pain when you're approaching them, kind of pointing that out to them, uh, as saying, is, doesn't it kind of suck right now that we're like completely beholden to Splunk and their insane pricing or whatever? Like I think that you can make that lock-in argument pretty well around open tracing, particularly. Hi, Ben. Hi. Um, so I'm wondering if you're working with any language groups because, you know, for Go, we're working together and a tracing client is useful when uh, it's, you know, by the entire ecosystem, the language the community. Are you working with any other language communities other than Go? I wish I was, <laughs> honestly. I mean, so John has filed some, like, very... Uh, articulate issues where she explains why I did some really stupid things, which I, uh, she's right, I'm wrong by the way. But uh, I would uh, love to be in touch with those people. I think in general I had a, uh, a feeling starting the project that the, we had to deliver some value before anyone would take it seriously. I think for the next major, for the next set of breaking changes to any of these languages, I mean I think it's unrealistic since Oracle is like Hell that anyone from like the official Java language people like will give me the time of day or whatever. But I think um, it's much more realistic that in Python or certainly for Node or whatever that we could get some really strong feedback from people who understand the idioms of these languages. And one of the challenges for open tracing, and this again is a bit of a plug for support from all of you, is that we um, need to support these concepts that are standard across languages in a way that's idiomatic to the language. And I think many of the things that John had brought up are like. I was kind of porting ideas from other languages that maybe weren't done in the most Go-like manner, and, and you see similar things with people who really know Python or really know Java. So yeah, I would love to be in touch with them. I think the failure is maybe on my part for not reaching out, but I think if I'd done that a year ago, no one would have responded to my email either, so there's that too. But I'd certainly welcome feedback, no doubt about that. I have a follow-up question. So it's mainly regarding um, distributed tracing in the wild, rather distributed tracing the way I kind of like see it done in the SaaS monitoring world, where you have companies like I think AppDynamics and New Relic who kind of offer something. Yeah. They, they, they try to sell distributed tracing as some sort of APM, mm -hmm. right? So I just wanted to know what are your thoughts regarding um, not these companies specifically, but just the use of distributed tracing uh, and calling it APM, because that seems to be fairly buzzwordy to me, and saying that, you know, hey, you want an APM solution? Well, this does APM, use this. Um, and whether you personally kind of see um, more nuance there, or, or the lack thereof? Well, I, I think that's a good question, but I, I don't mind. APM is, it's a marketing term, right? Uh, I, I would say that APM speaks more truly to the problem people are having, which is that it's application performance monitoring, like you're trying to monitor your performance. Tracing is a technique. Uh, and so I think of them as being apples and oranges in my mind. Uh, and 
I would agree completely that what AppDynamics and New Relic have done with their products is tracing. How distributed it is is de debatable, I think, and I think that their big challenge as companies that are quite established and make a lot of money is trying to make sure that they don't mess up their customer relationships while still charting a path into this sort of thing. You see companies like Datadog recently announced an APM product, which I think is much closer to a true distributed tracing solution. Um, X-Ray, as I already mentioned, is sort of like hedging into the space, although they positioned it as a developer tool and not as an operational tool. But uh, yeah, I mean, my personal take is, is that um, uh, APM is a marketing term that's designed to identify someone's pain point and tracing is, is an approach to a problem. The irony, though, and the, maybe the, the only part of my answer that isn't totally like predictable <laughs> is that I actually don't think that tracing is primarily an APM thing. I would argue that tracing is actually logging. Tracing is highly specialized logging. If you aggregate the logs, you can do metrics, and that's sort of like APM, but it's really logging. And I honestly think that there's more room to extend distributed tracing into the realm of uh, log aggregation than there is in the realm of APM in some ways. Depending on, how you, depending on how you think about the data, I think there might be more leverage there. Question. I'm out of time, by the way, so this will be the last question, I think. Oh, two questions then. Oh, no, sorry, feel free. One of your first. The spec seems to be changing a fair amount with like the way we use context and the information about baggage and stuff. How long until we find like, I guess, the open tracing way of doing things? I'm actually not sure I'd agree. I mean, I think in terms of the lifet lifetime of the project, I think in the second half of the project's lifetime, the spec hasn't changed at all. Okay. It's just that the project's like 10 months old. But, yeah, um, yeah. but the spec was, it was never declared as being finalized until it was, and since then we haven't actually made any breaking change. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's just really a young project. I probably looked at it quite a while ago. Okay. So during your demo, you showed a uh, kind of uh, Instead of tagging, so you know where you're getting all these different traces and you're tagging the other trace levels. So my question is, and I guess I don't know if this is at the stage where it's a great question or not, but um, at what, how much of that is useful in terms of uh, how do I prevent like somebody on my team from saying we need to just you know put as much information as possible into these things to the point of where you know all of a sudden my traces are now filled with enough data, extra data that now it's kind of hard for me to figure out signal versus noise kind of thing. I don't know. It, it, I guess it's kind of a weird question. Oh, it's not a weird question. I think it's a very, I think it's a, a, a very reasonable question that addresses something that happens all the time and is really annoying. <laughs> um, so I think it's a great question. I wish I had a great answer. I think. The, the best thing we can do and what open tracing has attempted to do so far is to try and um, we're being cautious about it because it's easier to add than to remove from specifications, but we're attempting to specify standards for uh, types of tags, like for an HTTP call, like what are the tags that you should support for the call, for instance, and also have some description of what the appropriate cardinality would be for other types of information. That cardinality is, is like the kiss of death for things like Prometheus, right? It's like if you have to, if you have a tag with 100 values, that's probably fine, but with 10,000 values, it's probably not fine, and it's really hard to like explain that to naive developers. Uh, so we've tried to do that through documentation, but to be completely honest with you, I think it's probably um, an area of just continuous you know, cat and mouse around limits and bugs and people, you know, running out of quota and that sort of stuff. Because, like, I can see a situation where, and you, you kind of showed it in your demo, where I could see, like, some of Prometheus leaking into open tracing and open tracing leaking Prometheus with that, like, uh, user-defined, like, tagging or whatnot. And, you know, at least my opinion, it's a, it seems like a great thing to keep that wall of separation but I can also see the benefits. Oh, I, I would disagree with that. I mean, my own code at my company, we have, uh, we have a metric solution and we have a tracing solution, and it's just agony to like measure the same thing twice. That was, in fact, the title of my talk. It's super annoying to have two timers around exactly the same block of code 
with exactly the same tags. It sucks. Like, so I think you do need some kind of switch to say whether or not you want this one to go to Prometheus or not, which is what I've referred to in terms of there's some question as to how to specify what should be sent and what shouldn't be sent. You don't want to send all of it, but I think it's incredibly annoying to have like code. One of my colleagues uh, is here, and she'll attest that Josh is like, like he like basically took over our weekly meeting to complain about how annoyed he is about this a few days ago. I mean, it's like super annoying pattern as a developer. So I think there is a lot of value to consolidating customer's features. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right, I'm done, I think. Thank you so much, everyone.